Chito. Okay, Welcome so. to Miami. How are you? Good, man. How are you? So let's just uh, sort of address what's going on right now. Um, literally about 120 credit media, 40 of them are from Ecuador, so literally one-third are here to cover you. Um, what does it feel to have the country supporting you, and, and can you talk about this moment, what it means for Ecuadorian MMA? I mean, this is a huge moment for my for my career, and I know people in Ecuador realize how how big this can be for for history, for for my career, and even for for all the Ecuadorians to like celebrate something like could happen on Saturday night. So I prepare very well, and I'm excited about the support and the love I'm getting for the people. Yeah. Um, Certainly, uh, Sean and yourself, you, you both are fighting for the belt this Saturday, but you do have a whole country behind you. And, uh, you know, you've mentioned before how you, you would like to um, sort of relieve the country due to some of the difficult circumstances that they've been going through. Um, do you feel like you enter o almost the UFC 299 with a bigger purpose? Um, I believe I try to find bigger purposes than just uh, the hype and fame or money, but... For me, it's just by leading by example and showing the people that with hard work and dedication, you can you can really achieve your dreams and you can you can get it done. And that will that will, a win on Saturday night will definitely give my country something to hope, something to be happy for, and something that hopefully can change things. Yeah. Sean said you guys have be have been uh, DMing ahead of this fight on on Instagram, um, and he told us to ask you what the conversations were like on the DM so I mean he's a weird guy dude I'm, he likes he likes a weird shit I, I tried to stay away from it the only thing I did was send him a, a, a picture of me back and I didn't I don't give, I haven't even read whatever he says after I get it I mean one of his main tools is get on people's head but good luck with that but I mean I'm gonna fuck you up and I'm prepared for Saturday night so He's trying to start things, and yesterday he asked me if I was ready to to lose the fight. So they didn't catch my answer, which I I, I would have loved the camera catch what I say back to him, but they only catch one side. But that's just one tool to the game, right? I'm ready to for a fight. My mind my, my my mind is in the right place, and I'm gonna kick his ass. Well, there's cameras now. I don't know if you want to fill in the blank for. for what I asked him to suck my dick. Okay. I mean, simple as that. I don't. I'm. I'm not here to be friendly. I'm not here to. I'm not here to be respectful. I'm not a karate guy. I'm a fighter. So you fuck with me, I'm gonna fucking fuck with you. I'm not. I'm not fucking around, man. Yeah. And uh, lastly, I don't know if you've seen, but he's been beefing with, our, you know, Ryan Garcia. He's also, you know, talked, uh, gone back and forth with Ilya Topuria. Um, and he's also been saying that he doesn't count the first, uh, his loss to you. So I, I just wanted to ask you, do you see him distracted? Do you feel like he's taking you lightly ahead of this fight? I don't give two fucks about what he's doing, who he talks for. I focus about myself. I focus about my schedule, my training, my body, my mind, and whatever he's doing, I can give two fucks about him or his life. Chido, you talked about running into him and inviting him to, to enjoy you in that way. Do you enjoy the sort of animosity before the fight? Does it give you a little extra spice? Bro, I'm a street fighter, dude. I, honestly, I don't give two fucks. If, if, if you're here to, and you want to throw down, we throw down. I don't, I don't grow up in a pussy-ass environment like his. So if you want to throw down, him or his team, trust me. Yeah. I don't give two fucks, dude. You sort of mentioned that it was a weird DM, but I've got to push on you and say, what exactly did he send you that was weird? He was just trying to get to my head. Just, I mean, it, the, the text wasn't weird. He's a weirdo. So I'm like, I'm not going to like engage with you on a conversation. That's why you send a selfie back, smiling. Do you, um, you know, you talk about how he's a weird guy, but you still respect his skills, right? He has shown that he's got some great striking. Of in course. His I mean, everybody in front of me, I, I, I'm not taking them lightly. I know, I have never said it's going to be an easy fight. I have never said in the past I'm going to have an easy fight. I'm always there for a hard fight. I'm always expecting the worst and, because the worst can happen very easily in the cage. So with me, it's not like, I don't take no one lightly, but I'm also I'm not going to fucking be under you and kind of like be afraid of you. I'm going to... I'm gonna go. I wanna go. I'm gonna go as far as I can to to get it done. So, and I've been doing it my whole career in the UFC. I got 10 years fighting for the UFC. 
I have never been in a fight that you that I disappoint people. You mentioned about his mind games. I'm curious for you. You could play a mind game if you just walk out there and kick him in the calf right away as hard as you can. Do you think that could get into his head? That's exactly what I'm planning to do. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to drill a hole to his face and, and then what? There's no talking in there. I know his corner likes to do the talking when we're in there, but I'm like, what are you going to... I mean, I, I would love my corner to give me advice to win the fight. If my corner is more concerned about talking shit about my opponent and don't tell me what to do, I wouldn't be with the people, but I mean, the whole circle is just like, it's all a full rainbow in there, right? And we know where they stand for that these days. See, don't right here. Um, Michael Bisping on his podcast said he, he had heard that you had a bad camp in his words, and <laughs> your coach kind of like, or Aljo said it or so whatever, and then. Oh, you yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. He's so fucking hungry for attention. He never got attention in the UFC. He become a world champion. He defended. He got booed in fucking Jersey against fucking Sehuro. Who gets booed against Sehuro? Holy shit, people fucking hate you. Now you're becoming a YouTuber because fighting career probably is not going well. I don't want to knock down on anybody because I want to focus on my fight and keep my karma in the right direction. But, I mean, he hurt. We have a private gym. There's no janitor in our in our gym. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't have people. It's the same three people year round. But Sarah and I, you guys will see how bad my camp was. And I'm a guy that in twenty what three fights in the UFC, twenty two fights in the UFC, has never come with excuse. Like most of these fighters, they always have something to complain. Oh, this and that happened. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, I didn't have this. I have never said anything. So that should tell you something about me. And all you, fuck off, dude. You have a fight ahead. Focus on your life. You're a fucking loser, dude. Um, and Sean was in here earlier, and he said, because Marab is weighing in as the backup in case one of you don't make it. And he said that if for some reason you didn't make it to the octagon, he would 100% fight Marab. Uh, if for some reason Sean didn't make it in on Saturday, would you also be down to fight Marab on short notice? thousand percent. Uh, and you've obviously you face a lot of long rangy strikers like Dominic and uh, Corey Sandhagen. So I'm curious, how does you know Sean's skill set compare to those two? Um, he's more of a sharpshooter. He's more of a guy that make you miss and and throw a big shot. But uh, the length is pretty similar. Even Fawn is pretty rangy. But I feel probably my biggest threat to him is like I can match his range. We have the same legs. We have same arm, so we pretty much are the same size. Like, I've been in front of him. Is I fought, I, I fought like guys like Corey, and if I can get to their faces, I can get to anyone's face. So, I'm very confident for this Saturday. Chido over here. How has your approach changed towards Sean since the first time you guys originally fought till now that you're going to fight for undisputed gold? Um, I see like this will be a way harder fight. Uh, he definitely got better. He definitely matured more. And I mean, two different fighters. It's, it's been almost four years, and I'm not thinking because I beat him in the first round, last fight is going to happen like that. I, To me, the first fight, it's over. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the second fight, and in my opinion, it will be a, a brand new fight, brand new opponent. I know we fought, but it's just, I don't like to think about the past. I like to see what's in front of me. And we saw Ilya Topuria make history in Anaheim when he beat Volkanovski and becoming the first champion to represent Georgia and Spain. So, and he exploded after that. So do you see this as something that could happen to you? I know you're already a huge star, but maybe to potentially explode even more after this? That's what the winners get. I feel with a, with a win on Saturday night, my, my name will keep growing, my brand will keep growing, but... You know, gotta win first. I feel like that's the most important thing, and I'm focused and I'm ready for Saturday night. And the focus is on Sean, but if you become champion, how do you envision your title reign as a UFC champion? I will, I will, I will, I will keep it real. I will do the same thing I've been doing through the years. I will, I will defend the belt against whoever is number one. I'm not gonna start getting picky or try to go to a different way. Class. So whoever is next in line, send it to me, and just, just do it like that, like, like a real champion. Gina right back here. Um, you mentioned that Sean is a uh, better fighter now. Just specifically, how do you feel he's improved? And then conversely, how have you improved since that first fight? Um, I would say on, on, on my side, 
I fought all the experience guys. I fought all the former champions. I fought I fought the the long the long run. I, I had the hardest fight to get to this point in my career and for a guy like him he's very talented. I'm sure he keeps evolving and everywhere, you know, grappling, punching, kicking, like there's just if you don't evolve in this game you're gonna stay behind. So I'm I'm taking this as a as a big risk, but we'll bring a big reward. And then you talk about the uh, the long road getting here. Do you prefer having taken that road? Like it, it, at the end of the day, is it better to have done it this way? I don't I don't know other way. Uh, I've been in this spot for my whole life. When I used to fight in South America, when I used to go to Peru to Mexico, um, I never got like an easy fight. It was never like okay, we're gonna build your record a little bit. I don't have an amateur record, so for me, it was always getting into the fire and. And five guys that I was supposed to lose pretty much my whole career, and that definitely gave me something, or make me find something inside me that most people won't find out because I went the long run. Thank you. Thank you. Chito, over here. Uh, when Sean was asked earlier about his prediction on the fight, he said he was putting you to sleep. What are your predictions for the fight on Saturday? Winning. Kicking his ass. Thank you, Chiro. Thank you. Arrecho. Over here, please. Over here. Over here. Hello, Chiro. I knew for a good source that the president of Ecuador, Daniel Novoa, is following your fight against Sean O'Malley. Is it possible that he will go to the Casilla Center and sit next to the Dinah White? Um, it's very possible. It's a it's a president of a country, so it, it will be easier to get him that type of seat. But I one, I haven't talked to Daniel. Two, um, I gotta see if he's here first. Thank you, Chito. Thank you, guys.